Okay, well, good morning, everybody. Hope you and your families are all staying safe and healthy and sane. I uh, want to welcome, thank you all for attending CloudPoint Geographics webinar on critical GIS infrastructure every public works department should have. My name's Bill Steele. I handle business development and marketing for CloudPoint. Uh, Jonathan Hodel, uh, founder of CloudPoint and uh, one of our professional engineers. He's going to walk us through GIS resources available for maintaining infrastructure assets. Uh, we're working hard to continually bring you guys more content and webinars and coming in May, uh, we'll have another webinar on how we can help maintain cemeteries with GIS. We'll have our first webinar about our sign inventory management system sign ops. Um, an introduction to parcel fabric and then reprisals of our webinars on ArcGIS Pro and Enterprise. Um, so we'll be on the lookout for those invites and make sure to spread the word. If there's anyone you know that might benefit from these learning opportunities, uh, go ahead, pass that along to them. That'd be great. Um, also, just wanted to make sure you guys are aware of how uh, the functions you have here in Zoom. Um, you've got the Q&A. We've got the chat. We will be answering questions. Uh, at the end of the webinar. So if you have any questions at any time, just hit that little Q&A button and screen will pop up, you can submit your question there. Again, we'll get to those and they are anonymous as well. So feel free to submit questions there and we will make sure and get to those at the end of the presentation. And then if you have trouble hearing or seeing anything, uh, just shoot me a comment in the chat room. I'll be monitoring that as well. So um, just real quick, most of you are familiar with us um, from some of our other events we've done in the public. Well, obviously we can't do that now. So we are gonna do a virtual showcase. Uh, it's a half day, a uh, live virtual event. We'll be doing that in a couple weeks here, May 14th. Um, so again, be on the lookout for an invite for that. And you can also visit the webpage to register at cloudpointgeo.com slash virtual showcase. So just to fill you in, we work in a lot of sectors, public works, facilities, land records, utilities, transportation, engineering, even cemeteries. And as a trusted Esri business partner, we help people drive intelligent decision-making using mapping technology. And we all rely on public works to sustain our essential services and give us a higher quality of life. And much of that ability is helped by the use of GIS. And here to explain more on that is John. Okay, thank you, Bill. And I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. And you'll be able to see it. Okay. So, yeah, thanks for joining us today. We've got a good turnout and uh, been looking forward to uh, talking about critical GIS infrastructure for public works departments. Now, many of you that are uh, familiar with GIS, GIS professionals, you've been working with this for years. This, some of this may be very repetitive and may be very introductory, but, but what we want to do is focus on how, as a public works department, can I take advantage of GIS? Where, where can I get the biggest bang for the buck and what should I be doing if I'm not already? So we're going to jump into some specifics here um, and uh, talk about a few different things as we look to, uh, first of all, a strategy. Um, something that we can focus on is we got to have a strategy before we before we get going if we want to uh, take advantage and improve on what we've already built um, and we'll discuss today critical components what I call critical components the hardware and the software that we'll look at um, and again it, and we're an Esri business partner so what we show today is going to be all on the Esri platform um, but we'll also look at critical solutions um, solutions that are available through ArcGIS that we'll touch on and one one in particular that we'll highlight is for capital improvement projects um, and then we'll look at some you know what are some of those items for public works that are essential but not necessarily critical so essential seems to be the common buzzword these days but they're uh, you know critical I look as as you just must it's a kind of a must-have essential is you can get by without them, but but you probably uh, you probably need them. So, uh, and then we'll kind of wrap it up with some concluding thoughts. But just a a note here on this screenshot I'm showing. This might look like just a typical map, but actually this is an example of using GIS where we've taken uh, lidar data and done some slope analysis. So I was experimenting a little bit with this in a sidewalk uh, inventory, looking at where the the worst slopes are, and you can see in red it shows where are the steepest grade changes. And in this case, actually there's a retaining wall 
uh, right there against the uh, the south of that building. So I just thought that was kind of a neat way to uh, another way to look at how can we utilize GIS. So, so let's talk about a strategy. First thing is we need to decide um, what are we going to use for a platform. We've got to have some sort of platform to be able to build our GIS, add data to, uh, you know, having something that put in your flexibility and familiarity is important. That's one of the reasons we really, um, we really support the Esri platform is the fact that it's very flexible, it's very configurable, uh, but at the same time, it's very familiar. Uh, most of your GIS uh, people are going to be using Esri as a platform and specifically ArcGIS, which we'll get into more later. We like to practice the four C's, collect, clean, configure, and connect to your data. That's really what it's about. Because what we're doing here with GIS is we're trying to drive intelligent decision making. So with your data, you're going to need to do the four C's, collect, clean, configure, and connect. And that's really what, what we're going to talk about today. Uh, enterprise is something else to, to think about. So how many users do you have? Uh, how you're going to connect those users? What tools do I need to connect to them with? Um, can I get by with basic tools using the cloud or do I need in-house servers running uh, ArcGIS server in an enterprise environment? Also need to consider with your strategy long range planning. Where do I want to be in five years and 10 years? Am I somebody who has institutional knowledge that this is going to need to be passed on to others? So all important considerations to take. Uh, and we've got a lot of people now that are interested in looking at migrating to electronic forms. And we'll touch just a little bit today on that. One of those popular ones is Survey 123. Um, but this is something that a lot of public works folks are interested in moving towards, getting away from paper, moving everything to an electronic format, which the technology is there. It's just a matter of getting organized and taking advantage of those tools and resources. And then big data. So how much data am I going to collect and am I going to need to use other big data resources like Amazon Web Services, that's AWS. Um, am I going to use point clouds and LIDAR data? All things that we need to, to take into consideration with our strategy. So let's jump into the critical components. First, I want to talk about hardware. So you remember the yellow boxes, and I've worked with uh, every one of these from the early days. And I remember, you know, getting out the Trimble, the early GOXTs, and you're looking at maybe uh, one meter accuracy and a screen that you couldn't see very well and in the sunlight. And uh, so we've come a long way since then. Um, so just kind of across the board here, you can see how we've progressed in technology. The first one is like a, a, a one meter, you know, sub meter unit. Uh, at the time, these were running a few thousand dollars and now you can buy these for 50 to 200 bucks on eBay. Uh, but the technology is outdated. And then we migrated to 2008 with the multiple buttons on the screen and you even get a fancy pen stylus there. And uh, But still, you know, you're a little limited. Maybe some of these were sub-foot accuracy. Uh, and then we migrated, and one of the key things that people were needing more and more was this high accuracy. And so with high accuracy GPS, we needed survey grade. And so then along... In around uh, 2011, 2012 came the geo, the new version of the geos, the Geo XH6000 and the Geo 7X, which is the picture here. These units were able to, if you bought the, uh, if you buy the the survey grade package, the professional uh, part, you can get the survey grade. But however, there's still the the idea is you go out and collect with this unit. You get survey grade accuracy. Of course, you'd have a pole and antenna attached to it as well. Um, and then you come back and you download that data on into your GIS using uh, some desktop software. And then you can publish that data on to say ArcGIS Online. <clears throat> That's using the, the handhelds. Then now, by now we're up to uh, using some newer technology. This picture here is of the Trimble. It's the Trimble R2. This is just a GPS receiver. And this, it's a unit like this would connect directly to your uh, smartphone or your, I, your iPad, um, which the nice thing is this can edit data directly on the cloud now. So it's really been streamlined using uh, ArcGIS Collector. Uh, we've really come a long ways with some of this. So just kind of talking about this critical hardware, you, you definitely need hardware 
that you can collect data with and update your data. So just some considerations and there's more options out there than Trimble. Uh, it's just what we've used in the past and become familiar with, but uh, there's another one out there called EOS Arrow. Uh, they make a good product as well. Uh, so just uh, keep in mind that this is the hardware for doing uh, field work is definitely part of your critical components. And I had drones in here. Um, I had them listed as maybe essential, but I decided, you know what? They, they are becoming more and more critical. Um, so with drones, um, we've been working with drones since about 2014. And we first started off taking some aerial photos and uh, looking at how we can implement this and, and use this data. The drones have become so user friendly and so um, out of the box deployable that I, I just think everybody, any public works department should have or be implementing a drone program. Um, when it comes to development, building development, being able to look at construction projects from the air, being able to create new maps on the fly. Um, the drone technology has just come uh, leaps and bounds and it just really is cost effective and it just provides uh, incredible value in, in your GIS. So uh, what we've got here, the first one here is just a Phantom 4 Pro. Um, you can pick up a unit like this with a case and all that for uh, less than $2,000. Um, you would need to consider what type of software you're going to use to stitch the images together and put those in your GIS. And you can use software online, like there's Drone Deploy and there's um, Site Scan. Uh, there's Drone to Map, which is Esri's product. Uh, so a lot of different options there. And then the one, in the the this middle one here is a Mavic Pro. That's uh, this is smaller, a little more compact. This is used to take out with a backpack and. Uh, very mobile, um, similar in price to the Phantom. And then the one on the right is the DJI. This one is an M210. This is more of an industrial grade. Um, you can take a little bit heavier payload. In this case, they got two cameras on this unit, um, a uh, thermal camera as well as a natural color camera. Uh, but just some different examples here. And um, with these, you know, some of these you're looking at the industrial grade, you get more in the ten to $15,000 for cost, but uh, just definitely something I think every everybody utilizing GIS and public works needs to take a good hard look at those. The other one here um, is tablets. So hardware, we need, we need hardware out there for uh, mobile devices. And I think, you know, smartphones can, can do the job. Um, you can definitely enable your crews with smartphones and they can get along just fine. But I think um, really if they're gonna be on it all day, utilizing this day in and day out, I think we really need to look at uh, using tablets. Um, you really need to have uh, tablets in their hands to be able to have this larger screen and uh, more functionality there. So I think tablets is definitely a critical piece of hardware that everybody uh, should consider when it comes to utilizing GIS for public works. So um, I wanna talk about the software components. So for those who are not familiar with the ArcGIS platform, uh, Esri is the company, the developer that makes uh, ArcGIS. ArcGIS is the software platform, the product that they develop. And ArcGIS is a platform. There's different components of it. And that's what we want to share here is what are those different components? What does that look like? So for one, desktop software. We definitely are going to need some desktop software. The options there are ArcMap, which is kind of the, the older version of, of the desktop software. And now that's being slowly replaced by what's ArcGIS Pro, uh, which is the current desktop software version. Um, these basic uh, license for these, you're looking at around $1,500. Uh, or now they have a, a, a ongoing yearly cost you can get these licenses through. Um, if you need more of an advanced, you're going to pay more than that. Uh, but it is definitely a key component of what you need. And then ArcGIS Online, this is just a must, um, regardless of your size. The, the ArcGIS Online platform, the flexibility it provides, and I'll show some examples here in a minute, of being able to centralize your data, being able to take advantage of the web, um, is just something that we really you know, can hardly get by without. 
Uh, and then the native apps, we'll talk about collector and survey one, two, three. So now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and jump out of our PowerPoint here. And I'm gonna show some of the, uh, the desktop software. So here's a snapshot, just taking a look at ArcMap. We can see here, um, this is a county culvert inventory that they have where you've got the desktop software. You can make edits in here, but this primarily is editing local data. Whereas uh, now with ArcGIS Pro, as we take a look at the ArcGIS Pro interface, uh, the nice thing here, this is the newer version of, of the ArcMap, which I just showed you. They've got the uh, functionality here, the ribbon look and feel that you might find in Microsoft Office or something. And whereas ArcMap, you just had basically one map document open at a time. Here with Pro, you can have multiple maps open in the same Pro project. Um, so just something you can take advantage of with the ArcGIS Pro. And ArcGIS Pro does come with a um, login for ArcGIS Online. So that's one nice thing is you have that capability. You're able to uh, utilize the desktop software as well as the online software or the online uh, cloud-based platform. So here in ArcGIS Pro, I have a, a uh, in this case, a water distribution. Uh, this is showing just some basic work order functionality. This was uh, set up in, in the app called Workforce. And this is kind of the back end. We're just looking at a map here for water distribution and they've got their their meters and, and their hydrants in there as layers. And then the real focus in this case is the, uh, the actual work orders on uh, on what they're what they're using it for, and up here I'm actually logged into my ArcGIS Online account. Here you can see, uh, so that's how we're able to interact there and and pull that data uh, in and out with that. So ArcGIS uh, ArcGIS Pro is really valuable. It's got uh, some nice tools that we can share web layers. We can interact with our um, web layers with publishing here, or we can um, publish the entire web map or we can also add data uh, from our ArcGIS Online account, which is nice. It's very uh, web friendly, adding content from our ArcGIS Online account. We can actually edit that as well. So now, as I mentioned, you're talking about a centralized platform, the ArcGIS platform, where you can pull data from the web, you can edit that data in the desktop software in real time, and the folks that are in the field can see it as well. And it's a simultaneous, uh, you know, exchange there, which is really handy. So I think that's something important that we that we want to consider is how to share that data, you know, exchanging it back and forth. So this is um, just showing ArcGIS Online, just the uh, our homepage of our organization, just to kind of give you a feel for what you have there. You've got um, different groups that you can have within ArcGIS Online. Here we've got one for public works, some community information. We've got collector maps citizen engagement. This is just some of ours, how we have them organized. And this is something you can do as well for your GIS, uh, for your public works department is keeping things organized in this type of a fashion using the ArcGIS Online. So, so I want to get more um, examples here. We've got an example of using ArcGIS Online here with a simple little culvert inventory application. So in this case, I've got all my culverts showing up here on my editing application and if I want to, I could come in here and I could use my imagery. If I wanted to just use my desktop browser here and put in a new culvert, I could do that and drop it right here and add my attribute information to it as well. Um, however, what I wanna focus on in this, in this particular case is how we can have uh, clicking on our culvert inventory. And again, this data can be edited here or it can be edited in ArcGIS Pro. But here I have related tables, related records, and I have inspection records here on my culverts. So this information up above shows me uh, just information on the physical features of that culvert. I could attach plans and specifications there as well. But then I also have inspection records. And here I have a photo of, you know, just a generic photo of, say, of my inspection records here. And I can navigate and look at those different inspection records. So it's just a very user-friendly way to, and I could search by culvert ID. If I look in, uh, punch that in, it'll take me right to that culvert location. 
So this is an example of a web application running on ArcGIS Online uh, within an organization. So now what I'd like to do is switch over to the mobile. I think if we wanna take a look at the power of really what we can do with the GIS, we, we have to consider what we can do with, with mobile uh, applications. So right here, we're gonna take a look and let me move my screen over so you can see that. I think you can see my screen here. Um, yep, looks good. Okay, so we will uh, go ahead and look at, first we're gonna look at Collector, ArcGIS Collector here. And again, we're looking at the same uh, web map we just saw there with the culverts. So in this case, I've got uh, my culvert inventory and I've got Collector pulled up. Now, if I wanna just look at how would we, what does this look like from the get-go if I sign out? This is what you're gonna get. You have the options here for signing into this collector app and you have to have one of two things. You either have to have an ArcGIS online account or you have to have ArcGIS enterprise and that's more, that's where you bring it internally on your servers. So in this case, I'm gonna select ArcGIS online and I'm gonna log in to my ArcGIS online or my uh, ArcGIS online account through collector here as I sign in and I'm not going to turn on my location because I'm at working from home and I'm not actually on site to be able to work with my, with my culverts. So let's say I'm out there though on site and I need to uh, do an inspection on one of my culverts and I'm going to select it here and I have two culverts that are very close together there. So it's popping up with the options, which one do you want? In this case, I'm going to look at culvert 6096. I'm going to tap on that. And then you can see here's my physical features about that culvert. It's a, CM, it's a 42 foot CMP, 18 inch diameter. And what I could do is I could say, okay, I'm gonna click on inspection records. When was this last inspected? Well, I did a couple inspections just this week on this particular culvert as we were doing our uh, practice session here. And so I did a couple inspection records that I can pull up and see here from the past and what, what exactly those had as far as those inspection details. But let's say today I realized when I looked at inspection records, you know what? This has been five years since this culvert's been looked at and it's time to take another look at it. Now we could also um, be able to uh, signify that if we wanted to in our GIS, have that highlight in red or show it as a different symbol. It says, hey, this is due for an inspection. So what I'm gonna do on my app here is I'm gonna select add an inspection record and what this is doing is it's pulling in Survey123, which is the other native uh, Esri app that I was telling you about. Uh, and again, I'm just running this on my iPhone here, and this just pulls up a form, and you can see it's automatically populating the culvert ID, and it's got the inspection date as today's date. And I'm just gonna go ahead and go through these drop downs and select what my condition is and see what the culvert rating is overall. And then for comments, let's say, I'm gonna use the, uh, the little microphone voice command and we'll say, that's not gonna let me there, but we'll, so we'll just type it in. We'll say structure has debris on north end. Okay, so then I'm gonna look at inspected by, we'll put my information in there. Now, if I wanna take a photo, I can do that as well. And we're gonna take a nice, picture of the wall here and we'll use that photo and then I'm going to click the checkbox down here in the bottom you'll see once I check that it's going to say survey complete your device online would you like to send it I'm going to say yes I want to send now which is nice in case you're offline that's not an issue you can still uh, create these surveys so so now if I go back to uh, collector I now have a new uh, inspection record tied to that to that particular culvert. So this is some just a nice uh, functionality to be able to make those edits and updates uh, through your mobile device and that's really something that we want to uh, be able to do efficiently and as you saw there that's that's really ideal is how to be able to do that in an efficient manner being able to just click on it add that inspection record and, and uh, go from there so now I'm gonna jump back to my desktop.
Okay, so this is, uh, you should be able to see here the same, make sure everything's going here. Okay, you should be able to see the same uh, application, the culvert inventory application that we had. And what I wanted to point out here was you'll be able to see then, we can see under our related records, it, it might take in a minute, but the uh, inspection I just done had done would show up here under the inspections and it would say, uh, it would show a number three there. So, all right. So next we're gonna look at um, ArcGIS solutions. So this is something where um, we have these solutions available to us. If you go to, uh, and this is, as I talk about critical things that we wanna consider for public works, if, if you have not been here to this webpage yet, solutions.arcjs.com, I would definitely suggest taking a look at this. Um, it's really something that is extremely valuable um, that you can look at and utilize that you can have different uh, features. So let's say, for example, I wanted a solution for my hydrants. I could come in here, type in hydrant, and I could look on the solutions page and I would see, oh, there's a fire hydrant inspection app here, or you know, a higher, a hydrant maintenance inspection, all of these different options. There's just uh, countless solutions you could take advantage of. They're also sorted by different types here. If you wanted to look there and uh, say, okay, just show me ones that are related to local government. But these solutions are all deployable to your ArcGIS online account, which is really nice. It's a quick way to get you up and running. Uh, with things. And, and just to jump back to ArcGIS Pro, we have uh, what's really nice is there's a tool called Solutions Deployment, ArcGIS Solutions Deployment. And from your desktop software, this is one of the easy ways to, to uh, light up, I'll say, some of these neat applications that are, that are freely available to you. So one of the things, the projects I wanted to, or solutions I wanted to highlight today, I wanted to highlight the capital projects plan. So if we look here, if I just type in capital projects and we'll see as that filters, I've got several options for capital projects. So I just want to show you some of these in action, what they look like and what we could take advantage of. So I could have my public works logo and department up here on the top and I could customize this page very easily that way. And I, let's say in this example, I want to just look at my stormwater project plans. And I'm interested in, okay, this, I have a new stormwater project I want to put in my capital improvement plan. Let's just come in here to, uh, I think this was called Ferry Creek. Yeah, we'll just say, we'll just say we're going to do some, uh, some bank stabilization here on Ferry Creek. So I'm just putting in a little project boundary here and I could import this as well and have have that represent my, my boundary of my new project. And let's say uh, this is gonna be storm 2-20, project name, we'll say Ferry Creek Bank Stabilization. And I could put details on it if I wanted to. I can click on my drop downs of what does this apply to, um, repair and maintenance. And we could put in here, okay, uh, fiscal year, let's say 2020. We could define our funding source. And then we'll say a plan start date is today, plan end date. We'll pick a few months down the road. Let's say an estimated cost. Let's say this one costs $125,000. And the contact is Jay Smith. And contact phone, we can fill all that in there very easily. And we can also attach plans if we had those and wanted to see those. So I'm gonna save this project, this plan that I've got here. And uh, so that's, that's just how it, easy it is to set up a plan. And again, this was in the stormwater, stormwater group that I added that to. So next, uh, let's say I want to look at these projects and I wanna review them. I can come here to the capital project review. And I can see here that I've got all my projects here and let's say I want to be able to sort those. I can sort them by the project ID. So I can click on one here and I can see that information on that particular project. It highlights down here, estimated cost, all of that information is available right there. And I could edit that here if I needed to. 
uh, to be able to edit and update that information on that particular project. I can also uh, filter by fiscal year. I think these are all, looks like, well, we'll, fi we'll filter out the 2020. And then we can see, I just have the, the two projects there that are slated for 2020. So what's nice though, is I can see those and uh, we can see all the information there that I've added and updated. And I can also add attachments. If I wanna add photos there regarding that particular project, I can put those in as well. So now let's say, okay, I'm, I have these created. I have my projects and I have my fiscal year plan. Now I wanna share these with the public. There's a really, again, this is all through ArcGIS online. It's all out of the box configuration and we can set this up to uh, show the public. So here I'm taking advantage of what's called a story map. And I'm gonna look at these different improvements and I just wanna have the public on, maybe they wanna go to my webpage and see what we're up to this year. And I can easily have these scrolling uh, back, and back and forth, easily navigate down my story map and I can have photos attached. I can also have my map over here showing updates on where those are at. And so it navigates along with my projects as well as what I'm looking at. So it's kind of a good way to communicate with the public. They can come in here and navigate and explore costs, fiscal year, anything I want to put in there regarding that particular project is available to them there. So, so now let's say if I had uh, my resident engineers that were working out in construction and they were working on these projects uh, and they actually needed to update information, they can either do it from their mobile device or they can do it from their web browser. And let's just go to our stormwater projects. And I want to give my field personnel the ability to be able to update and edit this information. So let's take a look at uh, this storm project here, Cross Creek Outfall Inspection and Maintenance. So it looks to me like it's highlighting in red saying, hey, this project is over budget, but it is on schedule. Well, if I'm out in the field or if I'm in charge of this project, I'm the project manager. Let's say I want to update my actual cost. Let's say this was a, we saved a lot of money here. Let's say it only ended up being $100,000 and I can save that. And what I'll notice is now I've, it's automatically updating. It says it's on budget and it's on schedule. So we can be able to update that very easily from a project manager standpoint. And then lastly, so we wanna be able to, and again, we can toggle these and sort them however we des desire. If we wanna see what phase the project is in, we could also do that. Um, but let's say we wanted to communicate with the managers and we wanted them to be able to easily access uh, what's going on with all of our capital projects. Then you have what's called the capital project dashboard. The nice thing about the capital project dashboard is it provides a very user friendly interface here for being able to just quickly uh, look at these and analyze. So I could sort my project by my projects by department or what type of project it is here. I can sort them and here I've got the different types. And then I could also look at different phases here as well. So if I just wanna see what's in design or what's actually in construction right now, I can easily see those here. Or I could also sort by fiscal year by easily selecting one of my tagged items. And then as I look at these, you can see that it updates on the top. I've got options for, you know, what percent of these are on budget, what percent are on schedule. And I can see these easily highlighted and changing up here as well as what's my total program cost for that year. Well, in this case, in, in uh, 2017, we're looking at a $30.7 million budget. And some of you may be saying, well, that'd be nice to have a $30.7 million budget. But regardless, if it's 30,000 or 30 million, the point is we can take advantage of all of these tools within the ArcGIS platform to provide uh, user-friendly data-driven decision-making tools. And that's really what we're trying to do here is be able to, to drive that decision-making. So I wanna go back to our uh, slideshow here to kind of wrap things up. So a few items that I included here. So we mentioned essential, but not critical. So you can get by without these. However, they are, provide a great advantage for you in your GIS. So survey grade, GNSS. GNSS is just the new term for GPS. It's global, nav uh, global navigation systems. So you can get survey grade as these gentlemen here in the picture are doing. 
they're using that R2 unit and that's Bluetooth to, in this case, they're using an iPad, but you could use a smartphone with this as well. But it just shows that what he could do is in this case, he's collecting that, that water shutoff with high accuracy, sub inch accuracy uh, using that unit. What he could do then is once he collects it, he's gonna come back out. All he needs is his, his tablet or a smartphone to be able to navigate back to it. He doesn't necessarily have to bring that, that high accuracy trimble back. So it gives you some nice flexibility having that survey grade. You can collect it with survey grade and then you can always go back to it with just a mobile device, making it a little easier to find um, and without having to take so much equipment in the field. Another essential thing to consider, AVL is automatic vehicle locating. If you wanna tie in your vehicles using your GIS, you can use uh, things like GeoEvent extension for ArcGIS server, and you can have real-time reporting of that, uh, whether it's snow plows, garbage trucks, a lot of different options for you to be able to tie in that real-time vehicle locating. Another one that we haven't shown here, we will be highlighting this at our virtual event that Bill talked about, our ArcGIS hub is a way that you can have a public portal. Let's say I want the public, for example, I wanted them to be able to download information or PDFs on my, on my capital improvement plans and projects. Then I could put that on what's called ArcGIS hub and have them easily search our web page and find that and download it using the ArcGIS hub tool. Uh, workforce is another one. Workforce is a basic uh, it's a native Esri app, similar to Collector and Survey123 we showed you. Uh, Workforce utilizes the real-time connectivity with your folks in the field that are using their mobile devices. You can uh, communicate things that come up and how urgent they are. For example, if somebody needs uh, their water shut off and you want to flag it, as you're, say you're a dispatcher in the office, you can flag it and have your field crews have that show up right in their workforce application um, using that native Esri app and working through the ArcGIS online platform. And another thing that's becoming more essential is 3D interaction, whether that's your underground pipes or uh, now we're working with ArcGIS indoors for indoor mapping. 3D environment, what I used to think of as just fancy bells and whistles is in fact becoming more of a reality and finding more and more use applications for that. So. So just some things to consider. Uh, again, a platform is what we talked about. Consider the flexibility of a platform. In this case, today we just looked at the Esri's ArcGIS Online and ArcGIS platform, uh, but also staff capabilities. How, how technical is my staff? What is our IT staff support look like? Um, do I have people who are trained and technical enough or do I want to have those folks um, that have those capabilities, all things to consider when I look at how and, and what do I need to implement GIS. Uh, and, and certainly um, the staff is an important consideration. Also investing in that ongoing continuing education for our staff. I can't stress the importance of keeping our staff up to date on the latest solutions that are available out there as well as how to use the tools. So definitely wanna encourage everyone to continue investing in their staff for training. Then if you're looking at, as we mentioned, one example was uh, we, we said ArcGIS Enterprise. That's something that's more of a little bit more, um, it takes some more GIS experience to be able to run that and to manage that. So if you decide to go with an ArcGIS Enterprise, think about who will I have maintain this and manage that system. And obviously annual budget is something we always need to consider, but you know, certainly, your budget's gonna be different for every agency and it just depends on what they wanna invest. But the big thing, the reason you wanna invest dollars into this is it's gonna be a time savings in both decision-making and planning. And it's, you're gonna notice more and more time savings each year if you're utilizing GIS and taking full advantage of the tools that are available. Uh, so you're gonna be able to do more with less, more with less resources if you're, if you're using it correctly. And the time to deploy might also be a consideration. If you're just getting uh, these, going with the basic, you know, ArcGIS Pro and you're gonna do ArcGIS Online, you're gonna do some of these solutions that we showed today and you wanna use Collector, you can stand these up in a pretty short amount of time. 
if you're going to take, you know, you're a larger organization, uh, say you're a city of, you know, 75,000 people, you want to use enterprise and you want to really start to streamline some workflows. Maybe you want to integrate with other third party applications. Definitely projects like those are going to take some more time. So all the things we want to consider as we uh, talk about the critical infrastructure. And just want to finish here with touching on some of the services we do offer. Uh, we offer enterprise GIS services. We have different teams, as I mentioned on the left, the enterprise and asset management, uh, as well as cemeteries, 911, land records, and the indoor mapping, and as well as SignOps, which is a sign inventory management system. And then managed services, the services we offer on the right, the managed services is if you uh, don't have enough GIS staff or you're shorthanded or you just need some expertise to come on board and provide that additional support to your GIS manager, we can certainly do that. Um, many of our, our municipal clients will take advantage of those managed services that we offer. We also have kickstart packages. That's where we come on site. And of course now we do it remotely for the most part, but kickstart packages, three to four days of high impact knowledge transfer and training for recipients, whether that's ArcGIS Online, ArcGIS Server, or ArcGIS Pro. We also do a lot of GIS implementation. Uh, if it's a case where somebody maybe doesn't have the GIS capabilities that they'd like at this point, we can help out with that. As well as web and mobile applications, we can help stand up and we have development partners that we work with as well on those. Uh, we also do data collection and inventories. So we've done a lot of uh, work in the realm of uh, collecting uh, water distribution systems, sewer networks, uh, manhole information, as well as asset inventories such as sign inventories and things like that. And then data cleanup is a big part of what we offer as well. So that's it for uh, the slide presentation here for you and for the, the today's uh, demonstration on critical infrastructure. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and turn things over to Bill and we're gonna have a uh, question and answer session here. And Bill, I'll let you go ahead and take the wheel there. Mm -hmm. Yep, thanks John, that was great. Um, we've got a couple in here right at the moment, so we'll jump into those. Uh, what apps are included with my ArcGIS online subscription? Yeah, good question. So with our ArcGIS online subscription, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and escape here from my slide and we'll go to our ArcGIS online homepage. I might've closed that out. Let me see if I can jump into that. So with our ArcGIS online subscription, um, there are some apps that are out of the box. Everything I showed you here today is included with that. Um, that was ArcGIS uh, online. It was uh, Collector and Survey123. Um, these are some other apps that uh, might be useful. Uh, hub, the, you get a basic hub with your ArcGIS online subscription. Uh, the dashboards, the, uh, the story maps that we mentioned, workforce, all of these here are, these are included with your ArcGIS Online subscription. So that's definitely something that uh, people want to take advantage of for sure. All right, um, let's see, one more here. What type of tablets do you recommend for the field work you were talking about? Yeah, so there's a lot of different tablets out there. Um, some people like to buy the robust laptops. Um, you know, those can be kind of expensive. Some of those that are dust proof, shock proof, all those. I mean, you can spend two to three grand pretty easy on on those types of uh, those types of devices. So we have actually we've had the most luck with iOS, um, particularly with iPads. Uh, it's not to say other tablets wouldn't work. That's just the direction we've gone. Uh, we've had pretty good luck with those lasting quite a while and we will put cases on them and be able to, to use those. So typically we would recommend uh, iPads in the field. Great. Um, that looks like it for now. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen to our contact page. So guys, again, thank you uh, for attending the webinar today. That was great. A lot of information there. You can definitely find more at cloudpointgeo.com slash manage dash services. Um, also, as a reminder, cloudpointgeo.com slash virtual showcase is the registration page for the virtual showcase on May 14th. Um, and then 
uh, something new that we debuted uh, doing all these webinars, of course, we have recordings of them. So if someone wasn't able to join or you need to go back and check something out, cloudpointgeo.com slash recordings. And then, of course, my contact information is there, and we're all over social media, so check us out there as well. So I'm going to leave this up for a few minutes. Uh, but again, thank you all for attending our webinar today, and we hope to hear from you soon. Thanks a lot. Yeah, th thanks, everybody. Thank you, Bill. Appreciate it.